Hello there guys, what is going on? Son of Chelsea back here again for another edition of Let's Talk Chelsea on what is turning out to be one of the most incredible days um, ever, I think, in football. I think in terms of what this day potentially means for the future of the game. As you guys know, I posted a video this morning at around, I think, 10 a.m., giving my initial reaction to the European Super League, sort of a general view of why I hate it, why I think it's an awful idea, like I think like a lot of people do. This day has just been mental, it really has. Um, I was going to post the latest added time where I answer your guys' questions. I think I'll delay that till the morning. Um, where I'll have another news video because, I mean, literally every hour it feels like more stuff is coming out and so much has happened since this morning. I was also going to do a Brighton preview, but I have to be honest with you guys, I've been conflicted over making a Brighton preview just because of the magnitude of the news today that could change the game and Chelsea as a club forever. So I am not going to make a Brighton preview. Like a lot of people, I feel like tomorrow's game it's not irrelevant. I will be covering it, of course, on the channel and watching it because I'm a Chelsea fan. But given everything that's happened today, it, that game doesn't feel as important as what's going on in the moment. So much stuff. So Chelsea at around 11 a.m., Nazar Kinsella, as well as other people, uh, confirmed that Chelsea had left the ECA, the European Club Association, after joining the European Super League. And pretty much since then, uh, the UEFA uh, chief, Alexander Seferin, has given a lot of uh, sort of comments and very fiery today in response to the proposal of the European Super League and sort of the heads behind it. And it's it's been a, a crazy day in terms of some of the comments, the strong comments he's given out. I mean, I was going to make a video on the fact that it seems like players could be banned uh, with the clubs, the clubs that do go into the European Super League could be banned from participating for their for their nations in, say, the Euros or the World Cup. Beyond that, though, as I record this video, there has been uh, comments from a UEFA executive committee member um, and head of uh, Danish FA, Jesper Muller, who, who told broadcaster DR um, he expects Chelsea, Real Madrid and Man City to be kicked out of this season's Champions League. He said the clubs must go and I expect that to happen on Friday. The big part there, if we're just focusing on Chelsea, is being banned potentially from the Champions League, being thrown out of the Champions League this season. All of that hard work by Thomas Tuchel and his squad in recent months uh, in the first half of the season to get through the group stage under Frank Lampard too could all be thrown away uh, because of this decision, because of Chelsea's decision to join the European Super League. Uh, I think PSG may be just handed the, the European Cup this season because, of course, three of those clubs in the semi-final are involved in this breakaway Super League. So all the excitement you guys had, all the excitement we had of progressing from the last 16, those wonderful performances against Atletico Madrid, the Olivier Giroud overhead kick, um, Mason Mount's goal against Porto, uh, getting to a semi-final and facing Real Madrid for the first time since 1998, Eden Hazard reunion, the idea of getting to another Champions League final that means so much, all thrown down the toilet potentially this season uh, by our hierarchy because of the decision they made um, to join the European Super League. So, that could be thrown out completely, uh, being involved in that semi-final. So that's something we have to watch. And also on top of that, the players, I mean, I, I just wonder what the players are feeling right now at these clubs, because I can't believe they're happy. I cannot believe elite sportsmen are happy and the, the football players are happy that they are being, their careers are being jeopardised, you know, in terms of competing at a serious level, um, being taken away from actual sporting integrity, which I'm sure like a lot of these players want to win competitions at the highest level. All of the Chelsea players who've been involved and worked so hard to get to the semi-finals of the Champions League, some of them for the first time in their career, a lot of them for the first time in their career. I wonder what they, they're feeling right now. I wonder what Mason Mount is feeling right now after scoring that goal against Porto, a big goal. Ben Chirwell scoring his first goal in the Champions League. Olivier Giroud's overhead kick, Hakim Ziyech's goal, Emerson's goal. I wonder what all those players are feeling right now, that that could be ripped away from them. Um, and on top of that, national competition, you know, international competition, the fact that players could be banned from attending World Cups. Um, big problems, big problems with Chelsea. And I think that, and big problems for all these clubs, because the amount of players we have in our first team that compete 
and our first team players for their nations on a regular basis. Um, you know, just going through it, when you think about the, the first team that starts on a regular basis for us, Thiago Silva, Antonio Rudiger, uh, Ben Chirwell for England, um, N'Golo Kante, Jorginho, Reese James, Mason Mount, Hakim Ziyech, Timo Werner, Kai Havertz, um, Christian Pulisic. I mean, you could go Olivier Giroud. You could go through so many names in our first team squad who are players that get regular minutes for their nations. And they're not going to be happy being prevented from playing for their nations, which is one of the things that players care so much about. And, you know, the Euros this summer that people have been excited about, you know, that could be put in jeopardy as well. Earth shattering news, it really is. And it has such a knock on effect. And, you know, as I, I fear opening my Twitter at the moment, because it seems that every five minutes something has has changed and you know I'm not I'm not complaining with Chelsea being thrown out of the Champions League and I don't think many fans will actually care that much because I I think that the problem is is that it's easy to look at just the short term currently with this not and and just focus on oh we you know we might be thrown out of the Champions League or we may lose the FA Cup final or we may not get top four this news is not just about this season it's not about the next four weeks it's about the next four to ten years of what it's going to do potentially to our game and what being a Chelsea fan just specifically is like, um, that we have to have these, these discussions. So Thomas Tuchel then did his press conference and I felt very sorry for Tuchel because he's he was put in an in, in impossible position today. He really was. I mean, in terms of those coaches, coaches across the, the league of these clubs, um, when you think about in the Premier League, uh, Mikel Arteta, Thomas Tuchel, uh, Pep Guardiola, Jurgen Klopp, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, of course, Jose Mourinho got sacked today. But, you know, those coaches who have to answer questions for the actions of their hierarchy, who won't come out and address this publicly, at least at the moment. Tuchel, I don't know what Tuchel was supposed to say today. I can give you his quotes. This is what he had to say in his press conference. Did you know that Chelsea were signing up for a European Super League? And how do you feel about being part of it? I know it since yesterday. I know it since yesterday. Um... But um, you know, I'm here to be to be in the to be in the hardest competition. That's why I came here. That's what I love to play the toughest competitions in Europe. With uh, um, that's why I'm at Chelsea's. Um, as you know, I don't get involved too much with all the subjects around us. I'm a bit sad that the, all these subjects are there now because normally I thought we can talk about. The Man City game and more important the, the Brighton game this is maybe not the case today but uh, as you know I'm uh, I'm part of this club I want to play these hard competitions and I trust my club to make the right decisions and I think it's uh, too early to judge everything and um, and uh, it's it's not my my part on my badge from from Chelsea it says I, I I have to play my role everybody has to play his role and my role is to be a coach and to be focused and we have an important game coming up tomorrow it was quite awkward and um the point he did make that I think is going to be intriguing tomorrow is players and and the, the whole setup around Chelsea of the players in what should be a very big game in terms of the top four race how their mind's going to be because they're human beings. They would have been reading all of this. And I'm sure there's going to be conflict inside the dressing room, inside the dressing rooms of a lot of clubs. How are Brighton going to react to this uh, as a as a Premier League club? Probably angry like Chelsea fans are towards Chelsea as a club for doing this, being one of the breakaway clubs. It's going to be incredible. And um, then I move on to the Premier League of, of the potential sanctions, not only from the Champions League. So Chelsea could be thrown out of the Champions League because of their decision to join the European Super League. But on top of that, the Premier League will be having a meeting tomorrow to discuss European Super League sanctions for Arsenal, Chelsea and Tottenham. This is from Football London. But of course, it also includes Man United, Man City and Liverpool. Uh, Premier League has called a meeting for Tuesday morning to discuss the proposed European Super League with the 14 clubs not involved in the controversial plans. So Chelsea, as I said earlier, could get further punishment, could be docked points, and those points could be, you know, detrimental to our top four race. But, you know, I, I think that the the point I come to is, you know, does the top four even matter anymore? You know, if Chelsea aren't that bothered about being in the Champions League, what emotional engagement as fans, the conflict, the conflicting nature of, I think, me at the moment of just thinking... Brighton tomorrow, West Ham, you know, it all feels kind of irrelevant at the moment because this is something that's so big in terms of the future of football. It's not just about what happens in the next couple of weeks. And if Chelsea get thrown out of the Champions League this week, 
Um, that might be the last time we play in it for a very long time if, if these proposed plans go ahead and, and what that means then for the, the international teams as well, the international players who could who could play and be involved in the Euros this summer, as I spoke about earlier. I, I think Chelsea should be punished. I think all of these clubs should be punished because if they're not punished, if UEFA don't take a strong stance, if FIFA don't take a strong stance, whatever you think about FIFA, and, you, and I want to make this abundantly clear right now, not friends of FIFA and UEFA, and that's the, that's the issue with how much of a mess and how depressing it feels as a football fan because FIFA have problems, there's corruption throughout all levels of the game at the top level, there, there really is, and, and that's what's hard to take. My sort of frustration and my anger at Chelsea Football Club is not me defending and justifying the terrible actions in the past of, of UEFA and FIFA, they are not clean, but I can't sign up to the European Super League because what it does to me, to, you know, to my club, to what it does to you probably as a supporter how it takes rips the the emotion and the integrity and the stakes and the jeopardy away from from games that we love and, and what our club is currently being involved in the Premier League being involved in the English game so there's that on top of it um just want to read out some more things in terms of supporters their sort of unified response to this which has been really encouraging so there was a joint comment from supporters groups representing the so-called big six um this was a statement we are working urgently and closely with each other and with the, the fsa and the fse to fight these proposals despite our club's behavior we are unified in opposition to them and we will continue to do all we can collectively to stop these plans this includes seeking joint representation to the government and all of the relevant football authorities we will issue a more comprehensive statement in due course and that comes from the Arsenal Supporters Trust, Chelsea Supporters Trust, uh, Spirit of Shankly, the Liverpool Supporters Union, Man City Official Supporters Group, Man United and Tottenham Official Supporters Group. So and in re in relation to Chelsea, what Chelsea are doing for tomorrow, two things. Uh, all the banners from the Shed Inn and Matthew Harding stand have been requested to be taken down ahead of tomorrow's match against Brighton. I believe Liverpool, we've seen demonstrations outside Old Trafford and also uh, Anfield today. Uh, Liverpool, I think, have done the same, taking their flags away from the cop. And on top of that, there will be a, a, a protest outside Stamford Bridge tomorrow night, 5.30. We are the Shed Great Guys, a, a massive supporter group that has been disrespected this year. This is where they come in, in handy and this is where they are so important. Uh, announcing earlier that supporters will be heading to the bridge tomorrow from 5.30 p.m. to make their voices heard in the absence of being inside the ground. This is not aimed at the team, but the board. Take banners, take signs, but remain socially distant and wear a face covering if you can. So that'll be going on outside the bridge a few hours before the Brighton game. Yeah, I mean, none of this should be aimed at the players or Thomas Tuchel. You know, they shouldn't be having to answer for this. I'm sure they're conflicted, especially the players, you know, as I was just mentioning in terms of competing in the Champions League, competing for their nation. It's terrible. I mean, Liam Toomey wrote this piece um, in regards to Roman Abramovich. Um, Chelsea fans are used to profits coming ahead of them. It's what has seen them win so much. And sort of the conflict of Roman and his investment and how much success and joy it's brought Chelsea fans. But feeling like there is, there, there is a cost to that, whether that's the short-term mentality, whether that is what we see today, which is such a big decision that has upset so many football fans across the land. What's next? I don't know. Um, I think that we just have to see what happens. I guarantee you by the time I, I'm here tomorrow giving you another news update, there could be more groundbreaking news. Um, something could have changed. Um, it seems like the clubs are so adamant behind this now. You know, Chelsea leaving organisations, Chelsea, Man United, Man City, Liverpool, Real Madrid, you know, across the the, the continent in terms of the clubs involved in this are so behind this at the moment and they've clearly been planning this for a very long time none of us should be surprised by this which is what I said earlier I think we, we've we known this is coming but I think the, the speed of which it's hit us I think has made it all the more troubling um, and horrifying really today those are my thoughts I want to hear your thoughts in the comments below also, I want to encourage you, if you're a Chelsea fan uh, watching this, and if you're a fan of any club of the top six involved in this uh, today, join your Supporters Trust, Chelsea Supporters Trust. You can go down there for £5, you can join the Supporters Trust. It's it's so important right now that fans have voices. If you care about the club, if you want to share your voice, if you're opposed to this, this is the best way to do it. I believe Chelsea Supporters Trust, which I'm an affiliate member to, 
um, has about 24%, I think, increase in, in members today, which is really positive. Please go and help Chelsea Supporters Trust out. They do so much great work. Support guys like We Are The Shed, who've done great work in terms of uh, fan movements and opposing things within within the club. It's going to become so important, not only today, tomorrow, but in, in the coming weeks and months to oppose this stuff because it's it's life-changing. It, it's going to change potentially the way the club is run and the way that we see the club. So... Let me know your thoughts. Give me a like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Um, We'll see what happens. Crazy times in the world of football. And I'll see you again.